Okay, great, let's get started. So to begin with, I just want to say that I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. And this presentation is not meant to serve as a replacement for the clinical examination and shared clinical decision-making. So if you are a patient experiencing breast pain, you should contact your clinician and undergo a full clinical evaluation to determine appropriate management and treatment. To begin with some background on breast pain, approximately 70% of women experience breast pain over the course of their lives. Breast pain is the most common breast symptom that women experience, and it results in many frequent uh, visits to the primary care uh, doctors. Fortunately, most causes of breast pain are due to benign causes, and breast pain frequently resolves spontaneously without any treatment. However, rarely, some types of breast pain may indicate an underlying problem within the breast. The clinical evaluation of breast pain is a very important component of the workup of breast pain. And the clinical exam should involve palpation or examination of both the breasts and the axilla or the armpit, as well as the chest wall and the skin of the breasts, abdomen, back, shoulders, and the upper arms. During the clinical evaluation for breast pain, it's important to assess the nature of breast pain. Is breast pain unilateral or bilateral? Is the pain focal or diffuse? Is the pain cyclical or constant? Is it superficial, perhaps on the skin or deeper within the breast tissue? And most importantly, is the breast pain associated with any additional symptoms, such as a palpable lump, skin changes, or nipple discharge? When we're talking about breast pain, we consider two different types of breast pain. The first is considered non-clinically significant, and this is cyclical breast pain that changes over the course of a patient's menstrual cycle. This is breast pain that is diffuse, meaning it's uh, involving more than two quadrants of the breast, or it could be considered pain that's referred to the breast from another part of the body, such as the heart or the lungs. This type of breast pain is considered non-clinically significant because it is not known to correlate with the presence of breast cancer. On the other hand, clinically significant breast pain is considered focal pain, meaning it involves less than a quarter of the breast, and is especially pain that's associated with another symptom, such as a palpable lump or nipple discharge. And this is considered clinically significant pain because there is an infrequent but existent association between this type of breast pain and breast cancer. We'll begin by discussing cyclical breast pain. So this is the most common type of breast pain, accounting for approximately two thirds of cases of breast pain. It is typically uh, bilateral and symmetrical and most commonly impacts the lateral sides of the breast. Sometimes this type of breast pain may radiate to the axilla or the armpit. The type of pain associated with cyclical breast pain may be described as stabbing, burning, or shooting pain. And some patients may experience breast heaviness as well. Cyclical breast pain is due to hormonal changes that occur during the menstrual cycle and is most common during periods of hormonal imbalance, such as during puberty, in the perimenopausal timeframe, during the first trimester of pregnancy, or immediately following childbirth. These are times when the hormones in the body may be in flux. Now, it's important to mention that cyclical breast pain is not related to abnormal hormone levels per se, but rather an increased sensitivity of the breast tissue to these hormonal changes. Treatment of cyclical breast pain involves reassurance. Oftentimes patients who have a properly fitting bra or engage in uh, appropriate physical activity have resolution of their breast pain. Sometimes reducing caffeine intake can be helpful in treating cyclical breast pain. And some patients use evening primrose oil, either in a capsule form or in the actual oil form for massage, and that can help cyclical breast pain as well. Sometimes cyclical breast pain is severe and refractory, meaning it doesn't go away with these more conservative measures. And therefore some endocrine treatments, these are types of pills that can be taken, uh, those may be considered as treatment. But these treatments can be associated with many side effects and therefore should only be used in severe cases. 
So most of the time, cyclical breast pain is just treated with reassurance and conservative measures. Non-cyclical breast pain without clinical symptoms, meaning there's no palpable lump or skin changes or nipple discharge, accounts for approximately one third of cases of breast pain. And this type of breast pain is more commonly seen in women who are over 40 years of age. Non-cyclical breast pain is typically unilateral and can vary in the location within the breast whereas cyclical breast pain is commonly bilateral and usually involving the lateral aspects of the breast. Non-cyclical breast pain could relate to trauma to the breast or could be related to referred pain, such as that from the chest wall. Some specific causes of non-cyclical breast pain may include chest wall shingles, that's very painful, uh, costochondritis, which is uh, degenerative changes and sometimes pain that can be located where the rib meets the chondrosternal cartilage on the anterior part of the chest. People may also experience focal non-cyclical breast pain related to breast implants or large pendulous breasts. Uh, additionally, certain medications have been found to be associated with non-cyclical breast pain such as oral contraceptive pills or other hormonal therapies. Some psychiatric medications or cardiovascular medications as well may cause non-cyclical breast pain. And occasionally breast pain may be referred pain from heart conditions such as a heart attack or esophageal spasm or from pneumonia or pleural irritation. The pleura is the surface that lines the lung. And if there's an infection in the lung, sometimes this can be uh, irritating to the pleural surface, and that can cause referred pain. Many people have studied non-cyclical breast pain that occurs without an additional clinical symptom. And fortunately, it's found that non-cyclical breast pain without an additional clinical symptom has a very infrequent association with underlying breast cancer. Several studies have shown that the incidence of breast cancer in patients with breast pain only is approximately zero to 3%. Some other studies have found no association between breast cancer and focal pain. And in fact, some studies suggest that the rate of malignancy is the same among women with a normal physical exam who have no breast pain and those who have focal breast pain alone. This is a table that depicts the results from 14 recent studies, which evaluated the cancer detection rate of imaging performed for patients with breast pain. The cancer detection rate is defined as the rate of positive cancers found divided by the number of exams performed. So here we can see that the cancer detection rate is very low for cases of breast pain that have been studied recently. The cancer detection rate, as mentioned previously, is somewhere between zero and 3% based on these studies. So that's really encouraging. Now a recent study published in 2018 asked the important question, how much are we spending on working up breast pain, especially now that we can see from the chart I showed on the prior slide, that the vast majority of cases of breast pain either resolve on their own or are associated with benign causes and are not frequently associated with breast cancer. So this study that was published in 2018 looked at 799 patients who had breast pain alone who met inclusion criteria. These folks excluded pregnant patients or those with a history of breast cancer or any patients who had breast pain with a palpable abnormality like a lump or nipple discharge or associated skin changes. So these were just patients who presented with breast pain. 30% of the patients had diffuse breast pain, 30% had focal breast pain, and 40% of patients did not have the pain specifically localized in the chart at the time of this study. Fortunately, 95% of the patients that were evaluated had a negative imaging workup, meaning there was nothing found on any imaging study that could be uh, decided to be the cause of their breast pain. An additional 5% of patients had a workup that revealed a benign finding on ultrasound, meaning maybe a cyst or a cluster of cysts that was related to the cause of pain. And only one patient had cancer detected, 
but it was actually in the opposite breast, the breast that was asymptomatic. So this was a really interesting study. And you know, knowing that there are so few causes of uh, breast pain that are depicting an underlying cancer, they asked the question, what is the cost of imaging workup for breast pain? So this was just one small hospital study but they estimated that the mean cost of the imaging workup for breast pain per patient was $328. And so looking at their group of patients over the course of one year for women under the age of 40, they found that the total estimated cost of imaging workup at their institution was over $87,000. And similarly for women over the age of 40, the total estimated cost of imaging workup for breast pain was over $157,000. So that's quite a lot of money. So they concluded that the workup of breast pain, because breast pain is so infrequently associated with breast cancer, that this represents an area of overutilization of healthcare resources. So how do we work up breast pain and when do we need to get worried? Well, the American College of Radiology is a group of expert physicians who are radiologists. So they're specially trained to evaluate images performed of various parts of the body here, the breast. And they put forth a set of what we call appropriateness criteria, which is a set of evidence-based guidelines created to assist referring physicians and other providers in making the most appropriate imaging decisions for their patients. As I mentioned, these guidelines are created by a group of expert radiology physicians who work together to evaluate all of the published data on a specific topic, such as breast pain, and then put together these guidelines. With regard to breast pain, this group of experts reviewed the relevant literature about breast pain and ultimately considered 42 published studies to determine the most appropriate set of guidelines for imaging in breast pain. They put forth four variants or uh, situations to consider in patients who may have breast pain. The first variant is in female with, females with clinically insignificant breast pain, which is considered non-focal, diffuse, or cyclical, who do not have any other suspicious clinical finding, meaning no palpable lump or skin changes or nipple discharge. And this is related to patients of any age. They say, based on the available data that the initial imaging for this type of breast pain is usually not appropriate to do any type of imaging, not mammography or MRI or some kind of nuclear medicine test or even breast ultrasound, because this type of breast pain, the data suggests, is not associated with breast cancer. Now, what is clinically significant focal breast pain? What does that mean? Well, this is defined as being pain that's well localized within the breast, involving less than 25% of the breast tissue and the axillary tissue, or the tissue that's in the armpit. And this type of breast pain is persistent. It's not intermittent, coming and going, or cyclical associated with the menstrual cycle. So clinically significant focal breast pain is well localized and persistent. And in patients who are experiencing this type of focal breast pain, uh, who are aged less than 30, the appropriateness criteria suggests that the first test to start with is an ultrasound of the breast, that this is usually appropriate in evaluating focal breast pain. In women who are aged 30 to 39 having focal breast pain, there is the option to perform mammography, which is these first two column, uh, rows here, or breast ultrasound. It's, it's sort of the preference of the referring provider to decide if it may, makes sense clinically to start with a mammogram or if it makes sense clinically to start directly with a breast ultrasound for women who are aged 30 to 39. And the last variant is for women who are aged greater than or equal to 40. And here we can see again that for those folks who are having focal breast pain that starting with mammography or ultrasound is usually appropriate working up this type of breast pain. And so if these types of patients, if those who are greater than or equal to age 40, have had a mammogram that has been done within the last three to six months, then the patient may proceed directly to ultrasound. If not, then we start with a mammogram and then move on to ultrasound to evaluate focal breast pain. 
we consider the imaging performance of breast pain in the evaluation of breast pain, we can see that studies have shown that if you have breast pain only and a negative mammogram with or without a negative ultrasound, there is a 99.8 to 100% chance that you do not have breast cancer, right? That's what the negative predictive value means. That's the likelihood that a person who has a negative test, such as a mammogram or an ultrasound, does not have breast cancer. So the negative predictive value of mammography and ultrasound are very helpful because it's, they're very high. And so those tests are very useful to exclude cancer in women who have breast pain. That's very reassuring. However, sometimes patients who may have isolated breast pain who undergo imaging evaluation may have an incidental finding discovered, such as a small mass or something like that. And that may be unrelated to the breast pain, but also may be somewhat suspicious looking. And in those instances, patients sometimes need to undergo biopsy for those findings that are incidental, and that can result in benign results as well. And this series of events can be very anxiety provoking for patients. Also, interestingly, based on the available data, it's not entirely clear that patients feel reassured by having a negative imaging workup. They may still feel uncertain about the cause of their breast pain or concerned about their breast pain and imaging, negative imaging may not completely uh, dissuade them from that. So sometimes there are breast pain, there are types of breast pain that occur with clinical symptoms and common clinical symptoms that are associated with breast pain may include a palpable lump, nipple discharge, skin thickening, fever, or breast inflammation. That means inflammatory changes in the breast, such as swelling or redness or other changes like that. Now, it's really important to point out that when any of these accompanying symptoms are present, breast imaging is definitely necessary for further evaluation. It's really important. Those who are experiencing breast pain with a palpable lump can be reassured that in general, the majority of breast lumps are benign. However, a breast lump is the most common presentation of breast cancer, and so we always take these types of symptoms very seriously. The first step of the evaluation of breast pain that's associated with a palpable lump should be the clinical exam. And again, this should be used to determine if the lump is smooth or irregular, if it's mobile within the breast or fixed. Those are important factors to know when working up breast pain. And depending on the patient's age, ultrasound or mammography and ultrasound should be performed for further evaluation. Just to reassure people, uh, there are many causes of breast pain that are associated with a palpable lump that are benign. One of the most common findings that we see are simple breast cysts. These are examples of a simple cyst on ultrasound where you can see there is this pocket of fluid that's completely black that has no internal vascularity. That's what this image is showing. And so this is what a simple benign breast cyst looks like. And this is a very common cause of a palpable lump that's associated with pain in the breast. We especially see this in young women. Sometimes fine needle aspiration can be performed for a large symptomatic cyst. And this process involves puncturing the cyst with a very small needle and then aspirating the contents of the cyst using a small syringe. So sometimes this provides immediate symptomatic relief for patients and they can feel a lot better after this procedure is done. However, cysts can be very uh, sort of tenacious and may recur after aspiration. So this doesn't necessarily always solve the problem completely. Another common benign cause of breast pain that can be associated with a palpable lump includes something called fibrocystic changes. Many people have heard of this, but maybe are not familiar what this means. So fibrocystic changes in the breast are common in women age 20 to 40 and can involve thickening of the breast tissue, which could be associated with some fibrosis or changes of the breast tissue that make them thicker and more firm feeling. There can be a development of cysts, which could be small or large, 
as we can see here on these ultrasound images, we have cysts in the breast within this very prominent area of fibroglandular tissue. And this is what fibrocystic changes can look like in the breast. This can cause pain and palpable abnormalities. And some women uh, experience symptoms of swelling, painful, lumpy breasts. It can be unilateral or bilateral. There is nothing necessarily to do to treat fibrocystic changes. That's just sort of the nature of the breast tissue. Um, but sometimes it's reassuring to know that this is what the cause is. And another common benign cause of a palpable lump that may be associated with breast pain is something called a fibroadenoma. This is a very common finding that we see in women age 20 to 40. And it is a palpable mass that's usually not associated with pain, but may be associated with focal pain. This mass, as you can see on these ultrasound images, is sort of gently lobulated and solid inside. It doesn't have that fluid inside like we saw with the cyst. And it's well circumscribed and definitely um, very close to the skin surface. So you could imagine this would be easily palpable, easily could be felt. These types of masses are mobile in the breast. Sometimes people refer to them as breast mice because they can roll around um, in the location where they're felt. And they are very common in young women. These are a benign mass though, and there's no association with fibroadenomas and breast cancer. There are some risk factors for breast cancer that I want to review as we're discussing breast pain, because I think it's really important to consider what a person's risks for developing breast cancer are when deciding what the next step is in their imaging workup. And so some of these risk factors for breast cancer are considered modifiable, meaning they can be changed based on someone's behavior. And some of them are non-modifiable, meaning that they are just related to genetic makeup or family or personal history. And there's nothing that you can do to change those risk factors. They just are what they are. So some of the risk factors for breast cancer that we know about include advanced age or being overweight or obese or having Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. In terms of medical history, having types of mutations such as BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations, that can increase your risk for developing breast cancer. We know of several additional mutations, which are somewhat less common, but also associated with increased risk factors for breast cancer. Additionally, having a first degree relative with breast or ovarian cancer, or having a personal uh, prior history of a breast biopsy can increase your risk for developing breast cancer, as can having a personal history of breast or ovarian cancer. That makes sense. In terms of medications and diet, um, alcohol use greater than one drink per day, or current or prior use of hormonal therapy or oral contraceptive medications can also be associated with an increased risk for developing breast cancer. In terms of reproductive history, those who had menarche before age 12 or undergo menopause after age 55, or those who have never had a child or have their first delivery after the age of 35 years have an increased risk of breast cancer. And those who have, generally speaking, increased breast tissue density on mammography or those who have a history of prior thoracic radiation exposure, maybe to treat something like a lymphoma or leukemia, those patients can also have an increased risk for developing breast cancer. So when we consider breast pain and lifetime risk of breast cancer, I think this was an interesting study that was published in 2019 that kind of looked at that correlation. So here, they, this uh, team of researchers examined 971 exams that were performed in 953 patients who presented with breast pain only, meaning no focal lump or any other symptom. Of those 971 exams, there were eight cancers that were detected in total. Four out of the eight cancers corresponded to the area of pain. Two out of the eight cancers did not correspond to the area of pain. They were in a different location. And two of the eight cancers 
The correlation with the location of pain was unclear based on the records. What this study discovered is that the overall cancer detection rate among this group of patients was 0.8%. So meaning the cancer detection rate, remember, is the number of exams of that result in discovery of cancer divided by the total number of exams that are performed. So that means that of all the exams performed, there were 0.8% that detected cancer. <clears throat> Interestingly, the cancer detection rate for screening mammography is approximately 0.5%. And those women who are undergoing screening mammography are asymptomatic people who just come in for a screening mammogram to get checked. So we can see that the cancer detection rate among these patients with breast pain is very similar overall to the cancer detection rate for screening mammography. And if we break it down by those who have increased risk factors like the ones we just discussed, and those who do not. Those who have breast pain but have the same risk factors for developing breast cancer, that's this group here that I'm showing on the screen, uh, the cancer detection rate here was 0.6%, which is nearly identical to the cancer detection rate for screening mammography of asymptomatic women. However, those who have breast cancer <clears throat> but have increased risk factors for developing breast cancer, sorry, excuse me, those who have breast pain but have increased risk factors for developing breast cancer as compared to the average woman, the cancer detection rate here was 1.5%. So that's about three times the cancer detection rate for screening mammography of asymptomatic women, but fortunately is still quite low. So this is very reassuring. And the authors conclude that the diagnostic evaluation of breast pain may lead to unnecessary workup and biopsies because it's so infrequent to have cancers that correspond to the areas of pain. And this may lead to overutilization of healthcare resources and can provoke anxiety among patients. So these researchers emphasize that routine screening mammography should be encouraged and patients with higher than average lifetime risk may benefit from additional tests, such as annual screening MRI, to help detect additional cancers. So to summarize, fortunately, there is a very low rate of malignancy associated with breast pain. The first step in evaluating breast pain is the clinical evaluation. And it is very important through the clinical evaluation to determine if the pain is clinically significant. Cyclical and diffuse breast pain are considered non-clinically significant and do not warrant imaging workup based on the available data because the available data suggests that there is no increased risk for breast cancer associated with this type of breast pain. Focal breast pain is considered clinically significant and this type of breast pain should be evaluated with imaging and the type of imaging should be based on the age of the patient either starting with ultrasound if the patient is young or using mammography plus ultrasound if the patient is a bit older. And despite focal breast pain having a small but uh, existing association with breast cancer, patients should feel reassured that most causes of focal breast pain are benign. And lastly, the most important thing to remember is that routine screening mammography is a key component of breast cancer detection. So thank you very much. I would be happy to take any questions.